Hi everyone, over the past month I've shared a few colour grading tools and today I want to show them in a more specific way. Instead of just talking about the tools individually, I'll show you how I'd use them in a real project from start to finish and how they fit into a complete grading workflow. This will be a three part series split into colour management, look development and clip level grading. That way each stage is a bit easier to follow. The project we'll be working on is a single scene short, shot recently as a showreel piece for two actors. Since the entire scene takes place in one location, that makes our job a little easier when it comes to look development. The fewer scene changes you have to balance, the more tailored you can be with your look since you'll have less difference between frame contents and therefore a smaller range of colours. The story itself is very Tarantino inspired. Two runaway lovers hiding out after a crime spree. The whole scene plays out in a rural woodland where their romantic reminiscing quickly turns into something darker and more toxic. Right now, the footage is sitting in its native log space, S-Log3, s gamut 3 So before we can start grading, we need to set up good color management to give us a solid working base. Here's how my project is set up. I'm using node-based color management my timeline colour space is DaVinci Intermediate and my output colour space is Rec709A. Now Rec709A in the output colour space can be a bit confusing, but it doesn't actually change how pixels are encoded. It simply tags the viewer window with a transform, and this only works properly if you enable Use Mac Display Colour Profile for viewers in the Preferences tab. If you think of your Resolve Viewer as a box that contains your image, the output colour space adjusts the box, not the image itself. On my MacBook Pro M4, I'm running the HDTV BT709 BT1886 display profile, which gives me a pretty sound Rec709 reference point. Combined with Rec709A as the output colour space and using Rec709 delivery tags on export, you'll get a grading environment where what you see in Resolve actually matches your final export whilst mastering to a common standard in a technically sound way, which we'll cover within our nodes in a moment. For critical accuracy, I'm also running an external reference monitor calibrated to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 for a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini, but I still like to keep my GUI display as close as possible to reference. With that sorted, let's move into the timeline. In the pre-clip group section, I'll apply an IDT Input Display Transform to take our S-Log3 footage into DaVinci Intermediate, matching our timeline space. This is just a simple colour space transform within Resolve. Next, I'll move to the opposite side of the chain and add the ODT, Output Display Transform, which converts from DaVinci Intermediate to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, matching my reference display. For ODTs and DRTs, there isn't one right answer. A colour space transform will get you there, but there are other methods that produce far better visual results. My favourites are Juan Pablo Zambrano's 2499 and Jed Smith's Open DRT, both of which are free and I'll link them below. To illustrate the difference, here's a Hue Sweep, another free DCTL by Thatcher Freeman. Notice how CST, 2499 and Open DRT handle colours differently. CST often feels thinner, and it lets through some harsh, overly bright colours. By contrast, 2499 and OpenDRT smooth those edge cases more gracefully, giving you a better foundation to build from. With OpenDRT selected, the project is now in display space and looking great. I'll also change the look preset to Umbra. That shifts towards a warmer and more contrasty tone helping to set the swampy, grimy aesthetic I'm going for. Now that colour management is locked in, I'll prep my node tree. Instead of applying it to every clip right away, I'll build it on a single shot. My fixed node tree looks like this. There's a parallel stack with three exposure nodes on top and three flare adjustment nodes on the bottom, another parallel mixer for windows, and finally a Hue Tetra DCTL. Flare and Hue Tetra are custom tools I've built. They're not on my store yet, but I may release them in future. We'll dig deeper into what those tools do and how this overall node tree structure works in episode three. But for now, I'm just gonna get it in place. To make this more efficient, I'll convert certain nodes, Exposure, Flare, and Hue Tetra 
into shared nodes and then unlock them. That way, when I copy the grade to all other clips, those shared nodes stay linked. Any change I make will ripple out everywhere, essentially giving me a group node system inside the clip level. And with that, the project is prepped and ready to go. In the next video, we'll start look development, building the style of the grade using two tools from my store, Neutral Bias and Look Bank. You can check out that video linked on screen now. Thanks for watching part one.